Hey everybody and welcome back to some more Oxygen Not Included. It's cycle 112 and once again we start the episode paused because of the fact that we have a pretty urgent matter that needs to be taken care of right at the start of today's episode and that matter is our hatchers. You'll see in the top left here we have got four critters on the verge of starvation and if we click on one of these guys they are 0.5 cycles away half a cycle away from starving to death which is of course not good we have put way too much time and effort into trying to get these hatches specifically the stone ones and so the first thing that we need to do in today's episode is go ahead and allow our stone hatches to eat something other than sedimentary rock we were of course feeding our normal hatches sedimentary rock because they needed that to increase their chances of getting stone hatches but now that we have stone hatches we don't necessarily have to keep feeding them sedimentary rock and on top of that we are also completely fresh out of sedimentary rock as well we've not been mining it over here in the slime area we've been focusing more on trying to dig out and get rid of the slime lung the slime and the algae up in this uh, top section here and so uh, real quick i am going to go ahead and allow them to eat igneous rock igneous rock is one of those things that we've just got so much of around the base you can see there's a ton up here if we go down to the bottom i think there's even more around here there's just so much of it around and waiting to be mined that we should be able to feed our stone hatches with that igneous rock for quite a while to come the normal hatches on the other hand cannot eat igneous rock and so for now i think we will go ahead and just feed those guys sandstone i don't know if the um critter drop off here is capable of doing that actually i think we might need a second critter drop off if we copy this and paste it like that have this one be for the stone hatches and have this one be for the regular hatches because i think if we try and put both sandstone and igneous rock into this critter feeder it's going to fill up with either one or the other and then either the stone hatches are going to die or the normal hatches are going to die neither of which we really want at this point in time and so let's go ahead and uncheck the normal hatches on the first critter feeder here i'm also going to go ahead and set that to a very high priority because i want that taken care of right away as soon as i hit play here so that our stone hatches hopefully do not die i will also set this to a high priority as well because although i'm less worried about our non-stone hatches i would still very much appreciate it if they didn't die that would be a serious hit to our coal production, which we really can't afford to take right now, especially given that we just increased our coal generator usage in the last episode and we're ever increasing the amount of power that we use throughout the base. And so hopefully they can get that done sooner rather than later. Hassan is on the job. Actually, everybody is on the job getting stuff done here. Our hatches are eating. This is good. Hopefully this guy who's going to starve in half a cycle will come and eat as well. There we go. Okay, so thankfully he no longer has that debuff. They are all still cramped. And so, again, we could do with moving these out into a new stable. But once again, I'm going to keep putting that off because I have bigger fish to fry. And that leads me nicely into what I want to work on in today's episode, which as a whole is morale. You'll notice that we do still have quite a bit of stress on Mima. He issues at 18% stress, much higher than everybody else. We did find the root cause of that in the last episode. It's because she doesn't quite have the morale required to match the skills that she has. And so what I do want to work on is trying to increase morale around the base as a whole. And one of the ways that I plan on doing that is by improving our source of food. Right now, everybody is eating mealwood. And whilst it's doing the job just fine, if we look at mealwood as a, oh, sorry, meal lice even is the name of the food that they actually eat from the mealwood plant. But if we look at meal lice in the database here, you'll see that it has a quality of gristly and a negative one here. And so our duplicates don't really like eating the meal lice. And if we hover over their morale here, you'll see that gristly meal negative one is negatively affecting the morale of our duplicates. And so I do want to work on better food today. I'd also like to work on just putting down more decor, improving items around the base, more statues, more paintings maybe a little bit of carpet as well as possibly some plants if we can get those going uh, these guys still cannot grow because they are way too hot over here is there a plant that i can plant in here that does grow in this 31 32 degrees celsius climate i'm hoping there is we'll take a look at that in just a second after they've uprooted that pre-existing plant but back over here with the hatches i would like the regular hatches to just be eating sandstone for the time being and the same goes for hatchlings as well they can go ahead and eat sandstone uh, for now Filter's not designated. That not, that not save this hatch. I would like you to eat sandstone. And hatchlings, I would like you to also eat sandstone. Yes. Okay, that is set up correctly. Uh, we can now go ahead and lower the priority of this again. It does not need to be priority nine. And so food-wise, over here, I do have my food calculator up and running again. And I'm going to quickly go ahead and actually uh, pause the game here whilst I talk over the food calculator, just in case something crazy happens and uh, I'm not there to 
to fix it. And so right now, this is the meal lice that we're currently feeding our duplicants. We've got eight duplicants and we've got dupe harvest on. We've got our duplicants manually harvesting all of the meal lice. And so if we were to feed all of our duplicants um, fully with meal lice right now, we would need 40 mealwood plants and that would consume 400 kilograms of dirt every single cycle. Of course, we don't have this setup right now. Uh, right now, we've got enough for maybe five or six duplicants. And of course, recently, we added more. So we don't quite have enough just yet. And because of that, you'll notice in the top left there that our food is slowly going down. We were above 100,000 kilocalories just a few episodes ago. Now we're down at around 70,000. And so this is the food we're getting right now. It's not particularly great. Um, duplicates don't love it. And so I was thinking of moving over to this guy right here, the bristleberry, or maybe more specifically, the gristleberry, which is just the cooked version of the bristleberry. And this guy requires 24 plants with eight duplicates and 480 kilograms of water. So essentially, the trade-off here is that we're replacing dirt with water. Now, originally, I was a little bit put off using water because I assumed, wrongly, that you would have to use clean water in the growing of the plants to make sure that the final product, the berry, didn't have food poisoning. However, it turns out that is not the case. So long as water is not being used in the making of the final product, the food poisoning will not transfer over. So for example, right now, this water is being used to grow the plant, and then the plant does not transfer any food poisoning to the actual berry. So the food poisoning in the water does not end up in your food. This is completely fine to use water with food poisoning in it. However, if we were to make something like meal lice, for example, sorry, lice loaf here, this is a combination of meal lice and water, because the water here is going directly into the meal that our duplicants will then eat, if this water has food poisoning in it, that will then be transferred over to our duplicants. So this is a fresh water only. You cannot use food poisoning water for this. However, for making something like the gristleberry, you can use food poisoning water because it's all absorbed and just used by the plant and it doesn't transfer into the actual fruit of that plant, which is good. Then I thought, why not take it one step further and go for the full hog here and try and get the stuffed berry, which is a combination of the bristleberry with the pincher pepper nut, which is, of course, from the pincher pepper plant, which you find in those hydrogen biomes. And this is, I think, what we're going to end up going with. It requires 24 bristle blossom plants and eight pincher pepper plants with 480 kilograms of water, 280 kilograms of polluted water, and then eight kilograms of phosphorite. Thankfully, we do now have a Dreco farm and the Drecos do produce phosphorite as they eat the mealwood. So we do already have this coming in. And on top of that, if we go ahead and we click fertilizer here in the top right, you'll see that we can actually drastically reduce the amount of both water and plants that we need to actually get this food. The added layer of difficulty is that we have to have fertilizer, which is made from polluted water, dirt, and phosphorite. And so you'll see right here, this uses about 400 kilograms of water per cycle, as well as 40 kilograms of dirt, as compared to the 400 kilograms of dirt for the mealwood, and then 21.33 kilograms of phosphorite. And then if we were to turn the fertilizer off, you'll see that whilst we don't need the dirt, the amount of water that we need skyrockets to 760 kilograms of water, which is almost double the amount of water that we would be using if we actually use the fertilizer. So back over here in the game, how do we get fertilizer? How do we use fertilizer? And how are we going to plant all these plants? And where are we going to plant all these plants? Those are all good questions. I'm glad you asked. First things first, there is a pretty big disparity between the temperature that the bristle blossom will grow in and the temperature that the pincher pepper plant will grow in. The pincher pepper plant grows, I believe, between, yeah, 35 and 85 degrees Celsius, and so it has to be quite hot in order for this to grow, whereas the bristle blossom, I believe, grows between 10 and 30, I want to say. Let me check the database real quick just to make sure I do not get that incorrect. Bristle blossom is between 5 and 30. Okay, so we can't put these in the same room, unfortunately. They are going to have to be spread out a little bit, but I did notice right at the top of our base here, we've got a pretty nice split to where on this side the room is about 21 degrees celsius perfect for that bristle blossom and then on this side we have a room that is about 37 38 even up to 40 degrees celsius which is of course perfect for that pincher pepper plant and so i figured that we would go ahead and dig out up here as well as dig out over on this side as well and then plant on either side of this now in order to use fertilizer i don't know if we have to have a greenhouse but the greenhouse is definitely going to make our lives easier and is also going to make our crops grow faster as well you'll see that crops grown within a greenhouse can be tended with farm station fertilizer to increase their growth speed now fertilizer as a whole we actually have already if we look under the agriculture tab here you'll see that we've already got 3450 kilograms of fertilizer lying around uh, you find this mostly near water 
water. Uh, you'll see we've got like a little bit right here, uh, and then there's probably some more around the base as well. And so we've kind of just been passively harvesting that and storing it as we dig out and expand our base. But of course, long term, that is not going to be enough. We could also look towards using the fertilizer synthesizer, which is this guy right here, which uses polluted water to produce fertilizer, which is pretty cool. Now, what I don't know is if the farming station produces its own fertilizer. I think it might. It says produces micronutrient fertilizer to increase plant growth rates. What I don't know is if you have to put normal fertilizer into the farm station to then produce micronutrient fertilizer if we do that's fine all it means is that we have to set up a fertilizer synthesizer as well as the farm station but if it doesn't it means that we can skip the fertilizer synthesizer gotta be careful with that one I, it always trips me up we gotta skip that guy um, and just use the farm station i'm not quite sure which one's which right now but we will find out going forward here so we'll continue the ladder going up there uh, we don't need this anymore so we could get rid of this it's gonna be a little tricky to get rid of simply due to the fact that there is already water in there we might have to just put down a, uh, a pitcher pump and then have them manually bottle that up and go and dump it into this body of water over here yeah that's probably going to be the way we have to go about doing that so i'll stick this guy like right there for now and let them go ahead and uh, pump that out it's not too big of a deal for now they can get into both areas so this is not going to get in our way too too much at least not just yet and then whilst they work through this, another thing that I was thinking about in terms of improving morale is the shower. We haven't set up a shower yet, and the shower does improve duplicate morale and also removes surface germs. The surface germs, I don't think we have to worry about right now. Nobody's really doing too badly in terms of being sick. I think germ-wise, uh, the base is doing pretty well. We've got zero surface germs around most of the base. I did notice we're starting to get a little bit of slime lung creeping up into the base on the left-hand side here. I don't think it'll ever pass through this wall water hopefully uh, but it is getting into here i don't think that's a huge deal for our drekos and drecklets but it is something we could probably do with getting rid of it's mostly due to the fact that we've just got loads of polluted water in this box now instead of the chlorine that we had previously and so just throwing down a bunch of deodorizers over there should get the job done now let's go ahead and speed this up a little bit surely you can get down now no can you not jump this ladder i was almost certain that you could you could jump ladders. I will build another ladder here just in case he can't quite make it. And I will set that. Oh, no, I was going to say he could definitely make that. Maybe this block here was uh, was in the way. I'm not too sure. Uh, are you using this for research? Is that okay? That might be okay. I'm going to go ahead and set this to uh, enable auto bottle real quick. And I'm also going to put the, uh, the priority of this up to like seven. Because I would love for our duplicates to go and bottle this up and drop it off into here. I don't think it's going to be super harmful. Yeah, you can see it has covered this with food poisoning. We can go ahead and disinfect it. And our duplicate shouldn't be too bad with that. Like, he is going to go and wash his hands at some point in the future anyway. So that's not terrible but nevertheless um i was looking into the shower and so i'm thinking of putting a shower down and right now we do have two spaces here and here and i think i might just throw these down like it's not ideal i would have loved for these to be um like right next to each other but actually i don't think that looks too bad and so so long as we set up the uh, plumbing correctly that is that we have the input and the output our duplicates should be able to take a bit of a shower in their free time and you know eventually get rid of some of that excess stress that they've been holding on to i am going to set this dig task here to a slightly higher priority so that hopefully we can get that done fairly soon new duplicate is available we will take the directlet eggs of course and hopefully uh, go and throw those in over there can i move these already I can't. Okay, so I'm going to have to wait for them to, to grow into Drecklets and then move them over into here. That is completely fine. I'm also going to cancel some of this roof tile here because we are, of course, uh, going to have to put farm tile into the floor to make this work. The pincher peppers do also require water in order to work, as shown in the uh, food calculator. And so we are going to have to pump clean water up to this top layer over here. So real quick, let me go and uh, get the outline going here. One, two, three, four. It's going to look something like this. Originally, I wasn't planning on having it the same size of the rest of the rooms. I was going to have it smaller. But given that we need 12 pincher pepper plants, I feel like we might as well go and make this the same size like that. We're going to have the farm station right at the back here because we want all of our pincher peppers in the area of this room that is the coldest. It actually gets a little too warm over to the left-hand side here. So we're going to put this guy one tile further back, right about... Nope. Third time's the charm, right about there. And then we're going to have... All of these come up and we're going to have 12 tiles in the floor here, 12 farm tiles to grow all of those pincher peppers. And just to make it into an actual room, we will, of course, throw a door on the front like so. And this room is going to look somewhat similar. Now, we only need four 
pinch of pepper plants. And so we don't need a room that's anywhere near as big as this one. But again, the reason why I'm going so far back is that the temperature required here is actually not high enough in this section, like 34, 35. Like this area here is not quite high enough to grow the pinch of pepper. And so we're going to have to grow these at the back half of the room. So for now, we'll go ahead and we'll just make it again the same size as the rest, like so. We can not do that tile so that we don't accidentally let any chlorine out. The room will still form just fine. We actually don't need to dig out any of that either. So that is good. And interestingly, the pinch of pepper actually do not grow horizontally. They will grow in any environment, which is good. They can grow in the oxygen, but they do not grow from the ground up. They actually grow, as you can see here, from the roof down. And so interestingly, unlike with our farm tiles over on this side, on this side, we have to grab the farm tile, click auto rotate, and then have those four pincher peppers growing from the roof down, which is an interesting little twist. I will go ahead and grow a fifth one of these. We do only technically need four to make this work, but I feel like having a little bit of extra pincher pepper won't hurt anybody. Um, I would love for this roof to be filled. However, I think I might have to go and uproot that because this is going to grow down into here. Which is also interesting because unlike other plants like the uh, bristle blossom and the mealwood, the pinch of pepper actually grows three blocks high instead of the, the usual two blocks high of, uh, of some of the other plants that we have around here. Just an interesting little little fact there, I guess, about, uh, about pinch of peppers. We do need to dig out this top section here because we are going to have to fill the roof in to actually make it uh, into a room. And on top of that, the pinch of peppers do also require light to be constantly shining on them in order for them to grow. And so much like with our algae terrariums beforehand, we are going to have to put down a little bit of light in the form of ceiling lights in this room. And for now, I think we'll go with this. It's quite possible we can move this in by one, but uh, no, it's not going to reach this one if we have one by the door here. Uh, although, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, we could have a gap at the door, which I think is actually fine. Yeah, let's do that, because I, I really want to try and keep the number of lights to a minimum. Uh, we do need to dig out this area, and this area, and this area. This is nicely done. I'm going to go ahead and delete this now. And I'm also going to go ahead and turn off auto bottling because I don't want them moving this water over to here. Does remind me I should go ahead and throw down my pitcher pump right about there so they can actually use uh, this water going forward. And then we'll delete this. That is going to have water spill down. That's fine. It's going to sit down here. We can always go ahead and just uh, clean that up. We should get rid of this and this. There is the water. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and uh, sweep that up if we can, guys. That would be fantastic. I would also love to get rid of this at some point as well. I think I need to get like a little ladder going onto here so they can actually get there and of course eventually we'll delete this and put like a few more islands down going up like that these can also go and this is actually coming along quite nicely this ladder does need to be a little bit higher up so they can actually jump over and uh, oh no it doesn't they've managed to make that just fine we'll get rid of that never mind we will however have the fire pole going up a little higher just so they can get down faster if needs be the showers are now online, which is fantastic. Stress is still quite high. Stinky is also up there. I have also been considering, uh, also real quick, Bubbles. What are we going to give you? I'm thinking of giving Bubbles farming because in order to use the micronutrient fertilizer, you need the crop tending buff. And right now, I think it's only Hassan who has the crop tending buff. And he is also in charge of the critters, both the Dracos and the Hatches. So that's a lot of pressure to put on Hassan right now. So I think I'm going to start pushing Bubbles down this line as well. But um, I was considering putting Mima into the skill scrubber. She's actually doing all right right now. Her morale has finally gone up above the uh, morale requirement. And so she should be doing okay. Stinky has fallen in morale to below the requirement, which is why his stress is slowly starting to, uh, to creep up there. But I have considered putting her in the skill scrubber and maybe getting rid of the mechatronics engineering for the time being because I don't necessarily think she needs it. You know, maybe focus on giving them a lower level skill for the time being. Maybe. Um, I'm not quite sure why I cannot delete this. Please deconstruct, cancel, and then deconstruct. Okay, maybe it was just like a visual glitch and the icon wasn't showing. Um, I think I do have to put in the tiles here. I think right now they can't reach this, which is why there is an issue. So let's go ahead and throw all the tiles in. This one right here needs to be a regular tile, like so. Uh, these tiles are all scheduled to go, but can't go just yet because they cannot reach that. So again, we'll do the ladder up just a little bit, like so. Uh, the water issue has almost been cleared up. We'll go ahead and get rid of that. Now, another thing to bear in mind is that the Bristle Blossom does produce the floral scent germ. And so we do want to make sure, much like we did with the bedrooms in the last episode, that we keep Mima out of this room wherever possible. We don't want her, you know, getting exposed to those allergies. It's just going to make her sneeze and increase the amount of stress that she has, which, especially right now, is not something we want to do. 
Fun fact, though, all the other duplicants actually get a slight stress relief when they walk through the floor scent. Everybody else actually quite quite likes having that floor scent around. So it's uh, it's actually a benefit to some of the other duplicants as well, which is uh, pretty nice. Let's not forget power. That does, of course, have to come up into here as well. And I didn't actually realize until recently just how hot these... Um, these lights get if we go look in the great hall down here you'll see this light is currently at 38 39 almost 40 degrees celsius it does climb quite high 40 degrees i saw one i think earlier like 45 degrees it really depends on uh, how long the light is on for but they do get quite hot and of course over time do increase the uh, overall temperature of the room that is something we are going to have to worry about long term with our bristle blossom farm here because what's going to happen is over time the lights in this room are going to slowly increase the temperature to where the room is no longer able to grow the bristle blossom, which is not great. Also, I'm going to replace these um, and not make them with gold because there's no need to have golden lights. And gold is a resource that we don't have uh, a huge amount of. So instead, let's use copper here for these lights, both here and here. I think that's a mistake I've made throughout the base multiple times is made things out of uh, gold when I should have made them out of copper. We will need ladders here temporarily just to get our duplicates up to be able to build the lights. I think this and this will work for getting them to do that. I will set all of this to a slightly higher priority just so that we can actually get this done within a reasonable time frame because right now they seem to be doing really anything but getting this done. And I think with that, we're actually pretty much almost there when it comes to uh, this setup here. I do, of course, want my bristle blossom seeds in here. Thankfully, we've got 19, which is good. Of course, we're more than the 12 that we need. We will copy and paste that to all of our farm tiles. We do need to make a grill now, the gas range. And I think for now, I'm going to put this here, maybe up here. I guess I kind of want it close to the fridge, right? But also kind of close to the, uh, the bristle blossom. Although I guess on top of that, we could have um, some automated sweepers now and some conveyor rails bringing all of the food down to the gas range and then automatically from the range down into the fridge if we wanted to. For now, I'm going to put it up in here just because we have space. We might do some rearranging later on down the line and make like an actual kitchen room that's closer to uh, to this area. We could even potentially put it in the... Uh, oh, actually, yeah, we could actually put it in the middle here. Like if we grab this guy and just put it down between these two. Unfortunately, it's, it's three wide and not two wide, so it doesn't fit like perfectly in the middle. You know what? For now, I'm going to put it here. We'll probably move it at some point in the future. For now, though, I just want to get it up and running so we can actually start making some of these bristle berries and hopefully start seeing uh, the benefits that we get from having a nicer source of food hopefully start seeing that stress go down just a little bit we do of course need to put a um farm station in this one as well i'll put that right about there my thought process with this room by the way is that we would block this off like so so we'll have another door right about here and i'm thinking if we need it of putting the fertilizer synthesizer in this room here and for that reason, I'm going to make this just one tile back. Again, the symmetry would be lovely. So now that it's a bit bigger, we can actually go ahead and put it in the middle like this. So if we need the fertilizer synthesizer, we can go ahead and put that right about there in the middle. Um, I think we might need it, but we'll find out as soon as this tile goes down. Power is... Or should be going into there now. Are they not connected up correctly? They are not. We need to go here and here. Uh, again, that might require those ladders that I just got rid of. So once more, I'll put those back down. This is now ready to go. It does sit outside greenhouse. Uh, why? Oh, it's because of the fact that we've not got this uh, this final farm tile down. Let's go ahead and make that a uh, priority seven. Same for all of these up here and for this tile as well. And we might as well also make it a priority seven for these two tiles just so we can get that done. As well as for everything on this side. They have finally uprooted that pinch of pepper so we can fill in uh, the roof there as well, which I will also set to priority seven to get that done and to make this into an actual farm. They definitely cannot reach up here. And so we will put some ladders down, which of course you guessed it are going to be priority seven. So they can actually go ahead and uh, get this built. This now should be a greenhouse. It is fantastic. We can finally actually get rid of the ladders here and also sweep up pretty much everything. I did hear the danger noises, but I don't know. Oh, what's happening? I keep, I keep seeing the flickering of the danger noise. I don't know what's going on with that, but we do have a new skill available. I assume it's our newest duplicant. Uh, oh no, it's not, it's Bert. Okay, so Bert, we could give exosuit training to. I think somebody in the comment section did mention that uh, Bert is moving slower when in the uh, the exosuit. Do you have like a, um, a low athletics score? Skills? Athletics of five. If we compare that to like Hassan, he's got athletics of six. So slightly lower, but nothing crazy. Athletics of 12, five. So you know what? Sure, we'll give him exosuit training for now. He's got the morale needed. Only just, but he's got it. 
And so now he should be able to move a little bit faster when in the exosuit area, which is going to help a lot when we start uh, expanding out further. We do need yet more storage compactors, which are actually called storage bins. We'll throw some of those down. I do want this to be a slightly higher priority for the range grill there, if we can get that going. Still don't want a new duplicate just yet. I will, however, always take Oxalite. That seems fantastic. I'd also like a slightly higher priority on the deletion and on everything in this room. And now that the pinch of peppers are actually growing, I'm probably going to go ahead and stop Mima from coming in here. So she's allowed out, of course, but she's no longer allowed in. Over here, we want to plant our pinch of peppers. So we'll plant those, and again, we'll copy and paste. Um, we do have to get rid of this. I don't know if they can plant this pepper because it's so high up. I think I might have to dig in up here so they can actually reach the farm tile from the top and plant it that way. We'll see. But I think that might be the case. I don't think they can reach up to this. Let me copy and paste. Let me have a look at this guy here. So produces micronutrient fertilizer to increase plant growth rates. Assigned duplicate must possess the crop tending trait. This building is a necessary component of a greenhouse room. The station only has an effect on crops grown within the same room. So it doesn't say anything about... Oh, no, wait, it does. Awaiting delivery fertilizer. Okay, so it does require fertilizer in order for it to work. I'm going to set this to priority six, as well as this guy to priority six. And all of these can also be priority six going forward, meaning that I want them, you know, taken care of above other tasks, but not as the highest priority going forward. Are these priority seven? They're not. Let's go ahead and prioritize these a little bit just so we can actually get these pinch of peppers online. Growth halted illumination. So this guy doesn't have enough light? Really? Let's have a look at the light overlay. I guess it's just not quite bright enough in this area here for this um for this plant. Uh, although, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We could have a gap at the door which I think is actually fine. Yeah, let's do that. Because I, I really want to try and keep the number of lights to a minimum. That's slightly annoying. It means we're going to have to move the light here over by one. And that makes me think I might need a third light, like in the middle here. So if we get rid of this light, this light, and then have three lights, not ideal, but not a huge burden either. They could build these lights all along from the ground floor. What the heck? I didn't need to put those ladders there. That's fine. We'll, uh, we'll delete those. This guy can now grow, which is good. These will all get grown eventually. This is online and working, which is also great. Hopefully, they can go ahead and uh, throw this down. It does require polluted water, of course. Let's go ahead and uh, get the plumbing going here. This one also, of course, requires... Oh, I'm a fool. I'm an actual fool. I need to deconstruct these. These need to be made out of hydrophonic tiles. Hydroponic tiles. Let me check the database real quick. I'm fairly certain that's right. Uh, they do require, yes, 20 kilograms of water per cycle. They will grow in these farm tiles, but... In the current state, what will happen is a duplicate will come down, use the pitcher pump, grab the water, come up and put the water into the tile on its own. The same is true up here, actually. Let me go ahead and delete those real quick. That is 100% my bad. Let's go ahead and uh, make these quite a high priority here. And let's also look at getting this water up here. So these guys need polluted water. And so it makes sense that we just bring that up from here. Okay, we'll try and keep these uh, in the walls where possible. I guess we'll do this for now like that just because I don't want to let this chlorine out, if uh, if possible. Bubbles is about to get a fall. That is fine. So hydroponic tile, rotate that. One, two, three, four, five. And then over here, hydroponic tile, build them all across the floor. These guys have managed to get themselves trapped. Uh, let's go ahead and set these to like priority eight, even higher than priority seven, uh, because I would very much like if our boys could get out of here and actually start uh, being productive. Again, I very briefly, something is... Um, is up with the building here, but only only so slightly. Bert does have a full bladder, which is worrisome. I'm going to hope that they have what it takes to make a ladder here, and hopefully we can get them out. No, you guys don't have ladder? Okay. This guy, Bert, is almost certainly going to, um, going to pee here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete, like, every other tile so that hopefully they jump and they can get to this done faster. Nicola is just... Hanging out. Probably annoyed by the fact that Bert's just sleeping here. Yeah, there's the mess. Okay. And everyone's asleep as well. Ah, sorry, guys. And just as stress was starting to get low as well, everybody's stress was at zero mere moments ago, and now everybody is getting a little bit more stressed. I can't blame them. That's not no way to start your day. But nevertheless, this is now almost ready to go, which is fantastic. We do need water, of course, being pumped up into here. So uh, where is our fresh water? I guess we'll pull it off of this line and have it go up and continue on going up 
and then across into all of these. Uh, we do, of course, need a liquid bridge, which we'll put right about there. The same is true over here. We also need a liquid bridge right about there for the polluted water. And then I think that should be pretty much everything good to go. I will go and plant the blossom seed and then copy that over to all of our buildings. If I get the pipe built, that will be good. We can plant the pinch of pepper. And finally, we should be able to actually start making the stuffed berries. That's the plan, at least. Uh, let's set this to copy and paste. There we go. So they can actually start getting rid of stuff. I don't know what is popping up. I should maybe play a little slower. I think it's it's popping up and then going away. We do have a new skill available. I didn't mean to click colony somewhere. I meant to click uh, skill here. Nicola does have new skills ready. And I'll give him improved construction three. Sure. Make him a little faster at building again. Why not? I think all of these are set to... I want to turn auto harvest off on all of those where possible. And I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but we will have to put, I think, a wheezewort or some form of cooling into this room because over time, the uh, the lighting here is going to increase the room to the point where these can no longer grow. They've got a fair bit of space right now. You know, it's 25, 26 degrees Celsius. Oh, fighting. What are we fighting against? I'm not quite sure. We do have yet more skills available, though. May, who is nice and far ahead on morale here. I'm actually surprised that Mimar is so low on uh, on morale. Like, everybody else is in the 17, 18, even 19 range, whereas uh, Mimar is quite low there. I wonder if it's because she's not getting the buff from the floral scent that everybody else is getting, possibly. Um, what do I want to give May? She's got the artwork and aesthetics down. She's also got plumbing, and she's been working on construction. We could give her improved construction three although again i'm thinking of giving her the farming trait just so we can get as many people as possible working on these farm stations um it's not that we need multiple people working on them at any given time it's more so that we just want people to be able to get this work done if the one person who's normally working on farming is you know busy doing something else like for example hassan is maybe busy working on the hatches or maybe on the drekkers you know may can come up and, and work with the farm instead right in his place so that is being done. Hassan is uh, growing this. This room is now finally complete. We've got some micronutrient fertilizer ready to go there, which is good. Um, over here, we can go ahead and select the pinch of pepper. We'll copy that and we'll paste it. And then finally, we should be good to go. Over here, let's go ahead and schedule stuffed berries. Uh, we don't actually have what it takes to make these just yet. And also, I was not aware that you needed gristleberry for this because gristleberry is the cooked version of the bristleberry. On the food calculator, it shows this as the uh, the whistleberry. That's interesting because that means that we are going to have to throw down not only the uh, the gas range, but also an electric grill. So I'm going to delete these two here. We'll put the electric grill next to that. And I have a feeling it might become a full-time job for whoever is our local cook. I think it's Frankie. Yeah, Frankie's got grilling too. So I think Frankie's going to end up spending quite a bit of his day making food for people, which is fine. That's fine. He's... um. He's trained to do it. Oh, it also requires... Oh, my goodness. I did not do enough research for this. It also requires natural gas. Mm -mm. Okay, so right now we actually don't have any natural gas. I wasn't aware that the uh, the gas... I should have known right, by the fact that it says gas range there. I was not aware that that required natural gas. As of yet, we've not found any natural gas, nor have we found um, like a natural gas geyser which would be super nice. We might have to start looking for one of those. For now, this is okay. It does mean that we're not gonna be able to make the stuffed berry that I really wanted to make today, but if we get the grill down, which for some reason I have uh, not got down yet, we'll throw that there, uh, we are gonna be able to make the gristleberry, which is significantly nicer for our duplicates of the mealwood, which will result in higher morale. Um, it's also just a nicer long-term source of food because we've got a ton of water and we can just keep cycling it around as we go here. There we go, this guy is now online and I would love for you to make me some gristleberry. And I guess we kind of just want this on forever. Like whenever we have bristleberry, I would like you to make it into gristleberry. Obviously it's going to take a couple of cycles here for us to get our first bristleberry from this uh, bristle blossom here. But eventually we should hopefully be able to start making some gristleberries. Nice. Now I'm a little concerned that this might need to be like an airlock. I'm just thinking about that floral scent as well. I'm thinking if we put a mechanized airlock here instead of a normal door, it is going to use a bit more power, especially if you want it to be powered, which I think I do. But and I'm going to make it come through the wall as well, just to increase that decor bonus a little bit like so. But I think in terms of floral scent not completely filling the base and basically rendering me more useless, it would be nice if we could get this somewhat sealed off. Did it say fleeing? I honestly, I don't, I'm going to have to, I'll see when I edit the video what, what's coming up there, but I have no idea what is, uh, 
what is popping up every uh, every like cycle or so in that top left hand corner. Uh, but either way, guys, I think that we are pretty much good to go here. We are going to start to get a um, a surplus of pincher pepper nuts because we can't actually use them just yet but that's fine uh, we'll eat them eventually it does now mean though that we can actually get rid of this massive middle section of um of mealwood because we've got thirty-three thousand kilocalories of uh, meal ice already and hopefully going forward our duplicates are not going to be eating that whatsoever um, but for now guys i'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's episode of oxygen not included there if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more going forward be sure to hit the like button it really does help out a lot leave a comment down below subscribe if you're new here to get notified as soon as new videos come out as always thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next time <laughs>